Okay. So uh, we know that DNA. DNA is a deoxyribonucleic acid genetic material of the cell. Uh, the daughter cell, uh, the information, all the information is passed on to the daughter cell by DNA. Okay. After the uh, after that, what is genome? Genome is a total haploid DNA content of the cell. What is haploid? Haploid is the number of chromosomes uh, that are present in the uh, germ cell. So, what is haploid? Haploid is the number of chromosomes in a germ cell. Now, what is chromosome? Chromosome uh, is highly compact form of the DNA and it appears only when the cell is about to divide. Now, uh, how does a, a typical eukaryotic cell look like? So, a typical eukaryotic chromosome look like a butterfly where this we call telomere. This we call centromere. And centromere of a chromosome has a disc-like structure. It is very important structure. This is how we Kinetochore. This plays a very important role in cell division. Kinetochore. Okay. And these two are known as sister chromatids. Sister chromatids. Now, what is haploid and diploid? We will try to understand that in a more detail. So, what is haploid? As I said, that haploid is number of chromosomes in a germ cell. Number of chromosomes in germ cell. And it has only one set of each chromosome. Whereas in diploid cell, these are the number of chromosomes, number of chromosomes in zygote. And this have two sets of each chromosome. So, here we have to that germ cells, which are gamete cells, are always haploid. We can say that. And the zygote is universal diploid. So, zygote can never be haploid and germ cell can never be diploid. Okay? So, if we are talking about a diploid cell, then definitely we have two set of each type of chromosome. For example, if one chromosome is like this, then other chromosome will also be like this. Okay. And if other chromosome is slightly different from the previous one, then its partner chromosome will also be look like this. Okay. So, in a diploid cell, we have two sets of each type of chromosome. We will call one as paternal chromosome and other as maternal. So one we get from paternal side and other we get from maternal side. And same here, paternal chromosome and maternal chromosome. As I said here, that these two are sister chromatids. So definitely these two are sister chromatids. Sorry, I am not this one. Uh, these two are sister chromatid. Whereas if I will talk about one this arm and other this arm, this will be non sister chromatids. Chromatid. So, here we have to that if the two arms are present in the same chromosome, they are sister chromatids, or if between the homologous chromosome, then they are a non-sister chromatid and one pair, this complete pair is known as homologous chromosome and in a homologous chromosome definitely one chromosome is from paternal side and other chromosome is from maternal side. Is it clear? So now we have cleared two, three things. First thing that we have cleared is homologous chromosomes. 
होमोलोगस क्रोमोसोम Then we have clear what are sister chromatids. And third thing that we have cleared is non-sister chromatids. I hope this thing is clear to all of you. So one more, uh, if these are two sister chromatids, if there is one other chromosome. And then we are taking two arms. These two are called non-sister chromatids. And one complete set from maternal and paternal chromosome in a diploid cell. These two are called homologous chromosome. Okay, now pause the video to note it down. Okay. Uh, so till now we have discussed what are gap one phase, what is synthesis phase, what is gap two phase, M phase, and DNA chromosome and the genome. We also have discussed what is the structure of chromosome. We have discussed uh, what are sister chromatids, what are non-sister chromatids. So we add, now we know that G1 phase, S phase, G2 phase, they constitute an interface in which the cells spend its most of the time, uh, around 90% of the time, whereas actual division occurs only for 10% of the time. That is called a typical cell division. Okay. So, uh, if we are talking about the a human cell culture or cell uh, from human which is a typical eukaryotic cell so uh, that completes the whole procedure into 24 hours 24 hours it means the human cell divides once in a 24 hour okay and it spends 23 hours in interface whereas it spends only one hour in the actual cell division Several cell they have a different time span in which they divide. For example, some of the bacterial cells like uh, Escherichia coli, E. coli, that used to divide uh, in 20 minutes. Yeast cell they take 90 minutes to divide. Human cell they take 24 hours to divide. So it is different from, for different type of cells. Okay. Uh, now we will see how DNA replication occur and how does it. Uh, Basically, uh, how there are changes in the DNA content of the cell. Okay, so uh, let's take an example of a typical eukaryotic diploid cell. Okay, so we have a cell here, which is diploid cell. So it has two chromosomes of each type. Okay. So this is a typical eukaryotic diploid cell. It is 2n is equals to 2c is equals to 4. This is just an example. Okay. 2n, it used to tell its ploidy level. N stands for ploidy level. Whereas C, it used to determine the DNA content. It says about the DNA content. 4. It represents the number of chromosomes. Number of chromosomes. Okay. Now we can see here the cells which is diploid cell as it is 2n. Other cell haploid over then definitely it will have just n. After that 2c the DNA content and 4 the number of chromosomes. This is the cell in its gap 1 phase. The cell is in G1 phase. Now definitely the cell is going to enter. Cell enters to synthesis phase. In synthesis phase, the number of chromosomes will remain same but the amount of DNA content will double half so this will occur like this okay now the dna content will get doubled now we can see here our two arms so this is after synthesis phase 
So, what is the situation here? To n, that means the cell is remain deprived, is equals to 4c, the DNA content at day rate was 2c, now it is 4c, and the number of chromosomes are same. Okay? Now, the cell division occur and the cell, there will be two cells, and these two cells will lack. So we can say 2n is equals to 2c is equals to 4 again. 2n is equals to 2c is equals to 4 again. So this was a mitotic cell division where the number of chromosome used to remain same even after the cell division. Okay. So we have seen the whole procedure how uh, this is after M phase. After M or mitotic phase. Here I am just talking about mitotic cell division. Okay, and this was after synthesis. This is after mitosis. Okay, now pause the video to note it down. Okay, now the uh, cell division there are of two types. One is mitosis, that is equational cell division, in which the number of chromosomes will remain same even after the cell division. And other is highly complex uh, complex process uh, that we call meiosis. Both are also complex with the summation, especially the prophase one of meiosis one. But we will do that. Okay. So in mitosis, which is the equational division, there are uh, four stages. Uh, first is prophase. Then metaphase. Anaphase. And telophase. Okay, now uh, as uh, for our convenience, we have divided the cell division into four phases. One is prophase, metaphase, anaphase, or telophase. But in reality, there are no such clear cut demarcation. We have just divided uh, for our own purpose. Okay. Now in prophase, the DNA content of the cell, we know that uh, when the cell is not about to divide, then the DNA content is not generally present inside the cell in a very compact form. So, as the prophase starts, the DNA starts to condense. So, what will happen here? DNA will start to condense. DNA starts to condense. And other cell organelles, they used to disappear. Cell organelles, there are various cell organelles, they will start to disappear. Now, so basically in the, um, when the cell is in the prophase, Nucleus, nuclear membrane also start to disintegrate. DNA content which used to present in a chromatin form, loose form of the DNA that we call chromatin. This also uh, start to condense and they start to form some chromosomes. So, in the, this is, uh, we can say that early prophase. In late prophase, we will be able to see the chromosome inside the chromosomes. And here, I am drawing a cell with 2n is equals to 2c or oh, there will be 4c actually because the cell is uh, after synthesis phase. 
तो सेल विल है डबल द अमाउंट ऑफ टी एन ओके सो इट इज टू एन इज इक्वल टू फोर सी इज इक्वल टू फोर वी नो दैट दिस इज पेटर्नल क्रोमोजोम मेटर्नल क्रोमोजोम पेटर्नल क्रोमोजोम मेटर्नल एंड दे आर वन होमोलोगस पेयर एंड दिस इज अनदर होमोलोगस पेयर ओके सो एट द एंड ऑफ द ऑल लेट प्रोफेस वी कैन सी द सेल लाइक दिस लेट प्रोफेस the cell will be in this scenario in mitosis uh in metaphase what will happen the cell they uh, these all cell will align in on the metaphase plate so they will enter to metaphase plate so we will have so this is called uh, this plate we will call metaphase plate metaphase plate okay and there are centrioles they move on the opposite direction this is centriole centriole also uh, duplication of centriole occur also in the synthesis phase Uh, along with the DNA content, spindle fiber they form and they get attached to the kinetochore. So here are some spindle fibers. They get attached to kinetochore on the both end. So now the cell will look like this. we can see here that the, uh, on both the sides of the chromosome kinetochore is attached to with the spindle fiber to centriole so that's why such kind of uh, attachment is known as bivalent attachment bivalent attachment and if a chromosome is attached only on one side then we will call that univalent that that was in meiosis but here it is bivalent attachment now these spindle fiber they will uh, pull the uh, chromatids you can see here that the sister chromatids will be separated from each other here in the next stage of the cell cycle cell will be like this centriole is here spindle fibers are here other so this is the definitely the spindle fiber is pulling to the chromosome so they will appear like this in the microscope yahan par dhyan dene wali baat yahi hai that the sister chromatids are getting separated from each other sister chromatids are being separated this is called anaphase of the cell cycle then comes the last phase and we call that telophase now again we will have two cells with four chromosomes so how did we start it this was the cell after a uh, synthesis so it was 2n is equals to 4c is equals to 4 and here we are having 2n is equals to 2c is equals to 4 and this is again 2n is equals to 2c is equals to 4 so in this whole process and that is this we call telophase telophase 
ओके द डिविजन ऑफ द डीएनए कंटेंट इनसाइड द सेल इज कॉल्ड कैरियोकाइनेसिस कैरियोकाइनेसिस whereas when the cytoplasmic content they divide we call it cytokinesis cytokinesis so in any kind of the cell karyokinesis inside the cell is followed by cytokinesis the process of cytokinesis is different in plant and animal cell okay so uh, if we can recall everything so it was a mitosis which was equational division it has four phases prophase metaphase anaphase telophase i have drawn it in a sequential manner so this was a first then second then third and fourth okay so in the early prophase the dna will start to condense nuclear envelope will start to disintegrate and spindle fiber they will start to Uh, appear and centriole will move on the opposite end of the cell okay and here what will happen now the uh, dna content will be appeared in a dna content will appear as the chromosome which is a highly compact form of the uh, cell uh, dna and it has kinetic core which will get attached to the uh, centriole with spindle fiber they have kinetic core on both side of the telomere which will get attached that's why we call bivalent attachment ye sara attach ho gaya after that what will happen they are on the uh, metaphase plane now sister chromatids we know that these two are sister chromatids they will start to separate uh, in the anaphase and in telophase it will be cytoplasmic content will also get separated okay uh, we should also know that the chromosome number counting that we count like the human being has this much number of chromosome and or other organism has a particular number of chromosome is done in metaphase so metaphase is the phase at which the chromosome number counting is done okay now pause the video to note it down okay so we have seen the separation of dna content by which we call karyokinesis which is a major main process inside the cell division now it is followed by the separation of the cytoplasmic content jisko hum log kya bolte hain cytokinesis okay so uh, we should understand the process of cytokinesis differs in plant and animal to plant mein kuch aur hota hai aur animal mein kuch aur hota hai and अगर हमें पता लगाना हो कि ऐसा डिफरेंट क्यों है देन डेफिनेटली प्लांट सेल दे हैव सेल वॉल सो दे आर इनफ्लेक्सिबल दे कैन नॉट मूव लाइक सेल वॉल इज स्लाइटली रिजिड वेयर एज एनिमल सेल दे हैव ओनली सेल मेम्ब्रेन सेल मेम्ब्रेन इज कंपेरेटिवली मोर फ्लेक्सिबल देन सेल वॉल that's why they have different type of uh, so now uh, we can see that inside a cell when the dna content has already been divided they have their centriole okay so in animal cell what will happen they will have the cytoplasmic content will separate by forming a furrow so they will form a furrow which will get more deep more deep and more deep so it will finally two cells will be formed so it used to initiate by making a furrow inside the uh, center of the cell whereas in plant cell which cannot be which cannot allow the formation of furrow then what will happen and there is no centriole in the plants they will form a cell plate inside the cell so this is what we call cell plate so cell plate is formed by middle lamella middle lamella and two adjacent cell walls okay Uh, the uh, cell plate it is formed by middle lamella and the two adjacent cell walls and the cell used to get 
divide it. Now one topic is remaining here. We know that cell phases are G1, S, G2 and M. These three are called interphase. This is what we call cell division. But uh, we can see in our body as well that all the uh, cells in our body are not dividing. For example, if we will see the uh, cells of our hand, they are not dividing right now. So, in which phase they are? They are actually in the G0, uh, G0 phase, which we call quiescent phase. Quiescent phase or resting phase. That means uh, the cell growth is occurring continuously but the cell is not dividing actually. So it is like G0, G1, S, G2, M. So some of the cell they will not go into G1 instead they will go to G0 phase where they won't divide. Now uh, we would like to know ki in, in, in uh, what condition the cell can divide. So we know that kabhi hand par chot lag jati hai, kuch bhi ho jata hai. So just to replace the lost cells in our body, the cell division starts. So they will uh, then occur from G0 to G1 phase and then the cell process will occur. Cell process is highly regulated and at each stage where we get G1, S, G2, M, there are several proteins that are responsible for the regulation of the cell cycle. Okay, so we have studied what is quiescent phase, what is G1, S, G2, M and the whole mitosis. Uh, process and also the cytokinesis which is different in plant cells and different in animal cells. Okay. Now what is the importance of mitosis in our life? So uh, we know that uh, there are two types of divisions. Sometimes we need to reduce the number of chromosome whereas if sometimes we just need to keep the chromosome number same and dividing the cell uh, so on. Okay. Uh, so 1 to 2 then 4 then 8. Okay. So like uh, once we have formed the zygote which is a diploid and the diploid organism has to be formed. For example in case of human being, so what will happen um, because the zygote is diploid and the organism is diploid, so meiosis cannot happen. So which division will allow the organism to form the whole organism by mitosis. Okay, so I think now it is clear and everything is clear. Okay, pause the video to note it down.